Hey there, wanderlust kicking in. Today we're diving into a city that practically invented chic coastal living. Nice, France. Get ready for azure waters, charming old streets, and maybe a glimpse of a sports car too. Expert speaker, I hear nice is more than just a pretty beach. Oh, you heard right. It's got this unique blend of history, natural beauty, and let's be honest, a touch of extravagance. You could be wandering through these ancient alleyways in the morning and then sipping cocktails overlooking the Mediterranean by sunset. Okay, you've convinced me already, but let's say our listener is putting together their itinerary. Where do we even begin in Nice? I'd say dive straight into the heart of the city, Nice's Old Town. Okay, what's so special about the Old Town? Picture this. Colorful buildings, those narrow winding streets that just beg to be explored, and a fantastic market called Cours Salea. Ooh, a market. Tell me more. You'll find everything there, from these vibrant displays of fresh flowers to local crafts and amazing food stalls. Okay, market food is always a win in my book. Anything we should look out for nice specifically. You have to try sake. Soka? What is that? It's a local specialty. Imagine this, like a chickpea pancake seasoned with pepper, cooked in these huge pans right on the street. They say the taste of the wood fire is what makes it so special. Oh, wow. Soka. All right, I'm adding it to my list. Oh. Okay, I can't talk about Nice without asking about those beaches. Ah, yes, the beaches. You can't talk about Nice without mentioning the Promenade des Anglais. Promenade des Anglais, what is that? This iconic stretch of coastline. It's lined with beach bars and has this electric atmosphere, especially at night. Sounds amazing. Picturesque, I'm guessing. Oh, absolutely. But here's something you might not expect. It's a pebble beach. Wait, pebbles, not sand? Got it. So is it still enjoyable? What's the deal with that? Yeah, so maybe pack some water shoes. But honestly, the view, the energy, the whole vibe more than makes up for it. Noted. Water shoes packed. Okay, okay. so besides the beach, what else should we see when we're in Nice itself? For a change of pace and an incredible view, you have to visit Castle Hill. Castle Hill, tell me more. Did you know it was actually the site of the city's first settlement way back in the Greek era? You can still see some remnants of those ancient walls up there. Wow. So how high are we talking? It's about 100 meters above sea level. 100 meters? That's quite a climb. And with that much history, it sounds like more than just a viewpoint. It is. It is. But... Those panoramic views from the top are worth it, especially at sunset. You can see the whole city, the Bay of Angels, everything. And the best part is you can choose your own adventure. Oh, okay. You can walk, take the stairs, or even an elevator to the top. Okay, I love that there are options. Speaking of options, mm -hmm. I know our listener loves a good day trip. What's near nice? Well, you're actually just a short hop from Monaco and the Italian border. Oh, wow. Which is pretty cool. But for a truly unforgettable experience... I'd recommend heading to Cap Ferrat. Cap Ferrat. What's so special about Cap Ferrat? Imagine hidden coves, crystal clear turquoise water, and a coastline just dotted with these stunning villas. It's basically the epitome of that Riviera glamour we were talking about. Okay, now you're just showing off. And for a touch of history, you can even tour a villa once owned by Baroness Rothschild. Wow, okay. It's now a museum with these incredible gardens. Okay, this is all going straight to my travel wish list, but before I get too carried away, any final tips for our listeners before we jump into the actual travel logistics? Yeah, two things. First, pack your walking shoes. Okay. Nice is a city best explored on foot. All those little side streets and hidden squares. Yeah. And second, brush up on your French. Oh, yeah. Good point. Even a few basic phrases will make a world of difference, especially when you're chatting with locals at those market stalls we talked about. Oh, absolutely. And I bet the locals in Nice have some amazing recommendations, hidden gems off the beaten path. Oh, absolutely. Don't be afraid to strike up a conversation. You never know what you might discover. Yeah, for sure. Like a hidden courtyard cafe or a unique antique shop, even the best place to watch the sunset. Okay, so we've established... Nice is amazing. We all want to go there yesterday. But how do we make that happen? Expert speaker, let's talk logistics. All right, let's map out that journey to Nice. First things first, getting there. You'll be pleased to know that Nice has an international airport just a short hop from the city center. It's always a good start. No long, complicated transfers. Exactly. Plus, the airport connects to over 100 destinations worldwide, so chances are you can find a direct flight from your city. Music to a traveler's ears. But let's say our listener prefers a more scenic route. What are the train options like? Well, if you're already in Europe, taking the train to Nice is a fantastic option. Right. The French rail network is excellent, and you get to enjoy the beautiful scenery along the way. 
Picture yourself gliding past vineyards and charming villages. Plus, the train station in Nice is centrally located. Nice. So, you've arrived in Nice, bags dropped off, ready to explore. How do you recommend getting around the city itself? Nice is a very walkable city, especially the old town and the areas that we've been talking about. You can really soak in the atmosphere that way. But they also have a good public transport system, including buses and a tram system if you need to cover more ground or prefer not to walk everywhere. Perfect. So options for every travel style. Now, about those day trips we mentioned earlier, how easy is it to get to Monaco or Cap Ferrat from Nice? Surprisingly easy. You can take a scenic train ride along the coast to Monaco, which is only about 30 minutes away. Wow, that's really not far at all. Imagine those views. And for Cap Ferrat, there are regular buses from Nice. Okay, so day trips are definitely doable. Now let's talk accommodation. Is Nice one of those cities with options for every budget? You know, it really does. Of course, there are luxurious hotels lining the Promenade des Anglais, if that's your style. Imagine waking up to the sound of the waves and those incredible Mediterranean views. But who wouldn't want to wake up to that? Right. We can also find charming boutique hotels tucked away in the old town, maybe in a historic building with a story to tell, or even apartments to rent if you prefer a more local experience with the chance to shop at those markets we talked about and really cook up some of that Nassau's cuisine. I love that. Now, expert speaker, you mentioned earlier that Nice gets busy during peak season. When exactly is that, and should our listeners avoid it? The summer months, particularly July and August, are definitely the busiest. Makes sense. The weather is, at its best, perfect for those beach days and outdoor dining. Yeah. But the crowds can be intense, and prices tend to be higher. Right. So when would you recommend for a balance of good weather and maybe a few less people? Shoulder season is ideal. Think May, June, or September. Okay. You'll still have warm, sunny days, perfect for exploring and enjoying the beaches. Yeah. But with fewer people and potentially better deals on flights and accommodations, you might even have those hidden coves in Cap Ferrat all to yourself. That's a great tip. So you've booked your trip. You've arrived in Nice. What's next? What should our listeners expect when they step off the plane or train? So we've covered all the logistics of getting to Nice, getting around... But now for the fun part, what do we actually do in Nice? Expert Seeker, what are some must-dos for our listeners? Well, we've talked about exploring the old town, strolling along the Promenade des Anglais, but a trip to Nice wouldn't be complete without experiencing those iconic spots for yourself. I hear you. It's one thing to see pictures online, but to actually be there feeling the energy of the place, that's something else. Exactly. And for the art lovers out there, Nice has a fantastic collection of museums. Oh yeah, like what? The Musée Matisse, for example. Okay. Houses a stunning collection of works by the famous French artist Henri Matisse. I've heard great things about the Musée Marc Chagall as well. Yes. His use of color is just incredible. That's another must visit for art enthusiasts. It's dedicated to his biblical paintings, and they're even more breathtaking in person. And speaking of art, Nice has this thriving urban art scene. Oh, cool. Influences from the early street art pioneers in France to more contemporary styles. As you're exploring, keep an eye out for these colorful murals tucked away in unexpected corners. Oh, I love that. Street art adds such a unique modern layer to a city. Absolutely. Makes you see things in a whole new light. And, you know, for something a little different, I highly recommend taking a cooking class. Oh, a cooking class in Nice. Now that's an experience. Tell me more. Well, Nice is known for its delicious cuisine, so why not learn from the experts? You can find classes focusing on local specialties. Think fresh seafood, herbs, those sun-ripened vegetables from the market we talked about. Okay. But imagine you go home and you can impress your friends and family with your newfound culinary skills, whipping up a true taste of Nice. Okay, you've convinced me. I'm signing up. <laughs> now, I know we touched on day trips earlier, but any specific recommendations beyond Monaco and Cap Ferrat? Absolutely. How about exploring some of the charming villages perched on the hillsides overlooking Nakes? Oh. They offer breathtaking views and kind of a glimpse into a slower pace of life. Oh, those sound idyllic. Any particular favorites? Aces is an absolute must visit. Peace. Yeah. It's this medieval village, cobblestone streets, and the most stunning views of the coastline. You can easily spend hours getting lost in its beauty, exploring the little shops and art galleries. There's a reason it's one of the most photographed spots on the French Riviera. It sounds okay. Aces going on the list. Any others? For something a bit closer, Saint Paul de Vence is another gem. Okay. It's known for its art galleries and charming atmosphere. 
Think like winding streets lined with these vibrant flowers, hidden courtyards, the aroma of freshly baked bread wafting through the air. Oh, lovely. It's a great place to spend an afternoon, just browsing art and soaking up that Provencal ambiance. I'm loving these suggestions. It sounds like there's truly something for everyone in and around. Nice. There really is. And, you know, one thing that often gets overlooked is Nice's proximity to nature. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We've been so focused on the city itself, those charming streets and that captivating coastline. Of course, the beaches are a given. But if you're looking for something a bit more adventurous, you can go hiking in the nearby Mercantour National Park. Oh, wow. It's a hiker's paradise. Trails winding through forests, past waterfalls, and up to peaks with those panoramic views we talked about. Well, that's a side of nice I hadn't even considered. It's truly special. And if hiking isn't your thing, you can always just take a scenic drive along those coastal roads. Mm. Imagine the wind in your hair, the scent of pine and salt air, and those breathtaking views of the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. It's an experience in itself. Okay, you've convinced me nice has it all. Any final tips for our listener as they plan their dream nice adventure? Pack for all seasons. Nice enjoys a mild Mediterranean climate, but it's always a good idea to be prepared for unexpected weather. And don't forget your camera. You'll want to capture all those unforgettable moments. Great advice. Well, expert speaker, I think it's safe to say we've thoroughly explored the beauty and the excitement of Nice. It's a city that truly has something for everyone. History, culture, natural beauty, and of course, that undeniable Riviera charm. Absolutely. It's a destination that will stay with you long after you've left. To our listeners, if nice wasn't already on your travel bucket list, it should be now. And if you've already been, maybe it's time for a return trip to discover even more of its hidden gems. Safe travels, everyone. Bon voyage. Thanks for listening. For more travel tips and insights, follow us and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. See you next time.